Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in to the October 8th edition of the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show here at 10 Arrows Coffee and Bistro. Drake Vitito alongside Coach Craig. Uh, Coach, first off, how's it going? We're outside. Yeah. Still in October. Really thought I'd be yeah, wearing like a long yeah, sleeve something uh, this I'm late into the sleeve, year. I'm wearing but it's not long sleeve weather. I don't right. know that much. It's a little disappointed. Still, uh, still summer. Yeah, a little disappointed in the weather, but hopefully we'll make uh, the turn for the better here in the colder temperatures here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, let's not let's not uh, mess around. Let's get right into it. Blanchard Bethany last Friday. That was a 48-44 win for Blanchard. Uh, uh, a little bit of a hot start, I guess I would call it. Up 28-7. <laughs> Uh, here and then uh, the it seems like the gaseous the gaseous went for both teams right I mean I know that you know Blanchard scored twenty after that initial twenty eight seven burst but you know Bethany came back and then it was kind of a shootout there uh, for the rest of the way I want to talk about something specific before we get into you know just the overall game special teams not really something we really talk about a whole lot or emphasize right. a whole lot on yeah. this show at least on the broadcast we like to highlight it when we can. Maybe just talk about, you know, how important the special teams were for that game. Maybe highlight some of the players that really made that, that, that unit shine on Friday. Well, you know, whenever we talk about <coughs> games, a lot of those things we talk about, situations, you know, turnover. We'll talk turnovers. Yep. What, what's the keys to the game? All these keys to the game. Turnovers. A lot of people say turnovers and turnovers. And a lot of times we don't say special teams. Third right. phase of the game that you really need to win in those – Games like that and those those uh, well not just shootouts but big games when you're playing those big games it comes down to some things like that right and obviously for us uh, special teams was a huge factor for us in that game yeah and and I think that phase of the game was a contributing factor to us winning the game in in the whole scheme of things when you look at it I mean the the kickoff returns that gave us great field positions the you know the stuff that Coach Blackburn puts in with our uh, kickoff return guys. And, uh, you know, with Cork and Bryson back there kind of working together back there doing some things. And Todd mentioned uh, it on the broadcast last Friday. It's very similar to what UCO does. Oh, is that right? Um, yeah. They do the toss or the fake yeah. toss, uh, yeah. and they do it almost every single time just yeah. to keep that, that unit on their toes. You know, we did it, uh, you know, we did it in the, the Tuttle game. We've done it in the Tuttle game. And we, we kind of always pull it out yeah. at, at one point in time. Now we've really kind of gone to almost a full-time deal yeah. where something's going on. So you really – you just really don't know what you're getting ready to get. Mm -hmm. um, so, in, in a lot of ways, that's good because it, it it keeps them in, it keeps them on their toes. It keeps them kind of spread out. It, you know, you can't over over commit to to one side or the other. And so, in that respect, it it, it was good for us because it gave us great field position all night long. Yeah. You know, we also, you know, I think it's on our highlight deal. You know, a block punt that that sets us up and great. That sets us up for a touchdown. Yeah, we get a touchdown off a block punt. We get a touchdown off a kickoff return. So, in in the whole scheme of things, that that was the the things that were allowed us to win that football game. And that that phase of the game was was critical to to winning. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, big surprise when we started off the broadcast. Um, Hudson Perriman. <laughs> and at quarterback, I remember uh, like uh, one of the first questions I asked you in week one, <laughs> uh, we were looking at like a seven to eight week thing. Yeah. And he comes yeah. back, you know, five weeks later um, and 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 does great. Um, yeah, obviously a big spot to be put in uh, with Bethany right. being, you know, uh, just I know the Blanchard's played a ton of good teams already. But sure. kind of just talk about, you know, the position that he was in and how he handled, you know, that moment. Well, yeah, he just – you know he's been dying for weeks to get in. Yeah, and and he's been practicing with us. He just hadn't had pads on, but he's done all the throwing and he's run some routes and he's done some things. And you know he's been with us four years in that offense, so it's not like he didn't know what was going on. Yeah, and I, I think in a lot of you know in a lot of ways he he sees some things that ways that he could contribute, and he just he wanted to play and if. They could talk him into releasing him, he would play, and that's what happened. They they said, you know, everything's healed up, everything looked good. I, You know, we obviously shoot for eight weeks, right. you know, eight to 12. When they when they do it and they tell you that, you know, and if everything works out, you could probably come back quicker. They don't want you to, don't want to tell you five and then it turns into eight. Right. Because that, that's where frustration lies. But, you know, they tell you eight and you get back in five and you feel a lot better. So – I think uh, that was a that was a big role in that, and just I, I just felt like even though he had been limited in 
what he has been able to do practice-wise. Um, and really, to be honest with you, had one one padded practice since December. Yeah. And it's a big ask. That's a big ask, but uh, I think he felt confident about what he could do and how he could contribute. And uh, I, I felt like he just felt like he could help. Yeah. So and forgive me because I, I didn't ask this question last year, um, but he played tight end last year, obviously. I don't right. know if quarterback is a new position for him this year or he just because of being no. a part of that offense at a different position he kind of could take the reins at a yeah. higher level than maybe someone that had well been he's in that been system. i mean he's been at quarterback since his freshman year and so that's where he was that's where he was at his yeah. freshman year he was at quarterback and and then he broke a collarbone in his freshman year um and then his sophomore year you know he was at quarterback but yeah. obviously wasn't going to play in front of carson right uh, cooksey so you know, he came to me at one point in time. Was like, "Hey, I, I want to play. I want to play. I, I want to get on the field." And I'm, I said, "Well, what about tight end? Yeah, you can play tight end. We don't have a tight end. We could use a tight end. If you want to play tight end, we can probably get you in." And he's like, "I'll play tight end." So we worked him into the tight end deal, and so he worked in as a tight end. You know, his sophomore year, and then obviously his junior year, he he played tight end. And we got to the point where we would spread him out some and let him yep. play receiver and, and do those things like that. So having – being and, – and still playing quarterback. So he was still our backup quarterback. Right. So he still worked quarterback stuff. So being a being there and you know, four years into this, I, I've always said that you look at the guys that have come in for us in the past, it's so hard to to do what we do in one year. It's so hard to get – all of the intricacies of what's available in one year it's just it's just it's almost impossible yeah uh for for a, a guy that's you know 16 years old to come do that right and you look at some of the guys that have moved in in the past you know when brock lamley moved in and mm -hmm. he had a good he had a good junior year his first year it was a good junior year but it wasn't great right but his senior year i mean he was on fire yep you know, and, and even look at Carson. I mean, Carson, you know, his sophomore year, he was he was pretty good. His junior year, he was pretty good. And his senior year, he was really good. Yeah. And so I think the more time you're in it, the better off you are. And, and so I think there were some things that Hudson was able to do in the whole schematics of our offense that, that our other guys are not ready to do. Right. And with what Bethany prevent, presented us, and the, the things that they could do defensively, um, I felt like that was better for us to, to go with the experience of HUD um, to, to take advantage of some of those things that we do offensively and, uh, you know, not taking away from what all the other guys do, but I think right. that would have just – what they do defensively put a lot of pressure on us to execute the whole phases of our offense, and, and, and we just we weren't quite ready for that, I didn't think, at this time, and I think that was what HUD was able to do um, on Friday night. We'll get to a clips here in a second. Got one last question for you outside of injuries. Um, we're halfway done through the regular season know, going into crazy. week six, week seven, technically, if you want to count week zero. Um, just spout about some of the good things you've seen after this first uh, half of play from the guys, if you want to shout out a particular group, just maybe the seniors or just – it, it, it broadly, yeah. What, what, what have you liked about this first half of the season for your guys? Well, Being undefeated, I mean, is nice. Not, yeah, winning winning five games is probably the biggest thing. I, yeah. You know, I, I I think that winning five games is big, but just finding ways to win. Yep. Just the the way we've been able to find a way to win. We haven't played our best at times, but we found a way to win. Yep. We we just we end up on the right side of the scoreboard. Um, so I think, I think really that, and then you look at some of the guys that's had to fill in, or some of the guys that's had to jump in, and you know we've, we've, we have not yet really. I think if you start week one, week two, um, and maybe week three, we we had some continuity there on the offensive line. Yeah, and. It's just been shot out of the water since then. Yeah. And and so we've just, for the last two or three weeks, we've just really been piecemealing stuff together. And that's so hard on you when you when you don't get to work together. Yep. And you don't create a and you don't create a, 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 a consistent 
teammate right beside you. Right. And you guys, you guys get on the same page. So it's really hard to be really, really good when you're really kind of shifting everybody around. So I think that – but those guys coming in and, and doing what they've done, you know, we haven't been very effective running the football, but that goes into some of that. Yeah. Um, we just – we we're, we're not going to – you know, we're not going to quit trying to run the football. Right. But it, it allowed us to uh, – I think HUD gave us – opened up a little bit of our pass game. Yep. Because of his uh, knowledge base. So it allowed us to do some more things that we probably wouldn't have been able to do. Um, but uh, I, I think that uh, just in general, the way our guys have, one, have found ways to win, and then, two, the, the way guys have filled in mm – -hmm for guys that have been out and guys that have been hurt and, you know, and stepping into an uncomfortable role. Yeah. But that's what we need you to do, and those guys are willing to do it. So that kind of leads into the next. You were talking about continuity within a group. You know, that offensive line has been banged up a little bit. Can you go a little deeper, give me maybe the, the people in injury report? Well, yeah. Well, update, losing, I guess. Losing losing Braden, you know, uh, you know losing Heffernan to, to his ankle – you know, really takes that takes that out of us, and then it, then then you have to take a guy like now we have to take a guy like Luke, Luke Meeker, who's really a guard, make a tackle out of him. Then you bring in a guy like Braden Stacy, who's really a, a linebacker, and we got to make a guard out of him. And mm -hmm. you know, and then we took we we took uh, Rinkin last week and took him and put him at tackle, and then you know he hurts his shoulder, so he's back out. So we got to take Luke back out to tackle, and right bring Braden in and Mason Pierce goes and, down as well. And, well Mason wasn't in there it was actually Rinkin in Pierce's uniform oh, so okay well yeah, this is so news to me he, yeah he changed this is why he we threw me this. a curveball on uh because we put him in we changed his number because he was in 33 so we put him in 62 so he could play tackle but at the last second he jumped in 63 okay and I was like well I'm not I'm not I've already <laughs> done the roster I'm not doing it again so, so is that a shoulder so yeah Rinkin? so he already shoulder so We'll get an MRI on that and, and uh, see where he's at and see where he stands and what's his prognosis for going forward for the rest of the season. But, um, yeah, just that that caused a lot of shakeup. Then, you know, yeah. so then you take, you know, a guy like Braden Stacey, who we've pretty much exclusively played at linebacker, and now he's got to play guard. So now he's going two ways. You know, all of our – Luke's going two ways. Cooksey's going two ways. Yep. You know, Jace is going two ways. Cade's going two. Every one of those guys it's a are going. Right yeah, now. every guys are going two ways. All those guys up there now are going two ways, and we don't have any single side guys on that. So it, it wears you down a little bit. But because because we are getting kind of worn down stuff, we're kind of having to shuffle guys around. So it just it just messes with your flow. Yeah. You know, and we just we just don't ever get we don't get it going uh, consistently enough. But uh, it's just. Uh, it, the good thing about it is, you know, we patch it together as good as we can. Those guys go out and compete, and that's the name of the game. Right. Halfway home on the regular season, still 5-0. and Let's get into some clips from uh, last Friday. Clip one. So our opening drive, uh, we got a great field position started off. Go a little sprint out pass here and run a little under set there with Bryson, and uh, HUD puts a good throw on him and uh, let Bryson do the rest of the work right there. and. You know, I thought that was I, – I, I was really shocked that he was able to outrun everybody there. He had some pretty pretty fast guys on pretty him. Pretty so much I, just went horizontal so that pretty on much, him. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much tells you what he's got in the tank too. So, yeah. he outran some guys that can go. So, take it to the end zone for a big touchdown or opening drive. So, that really kind of set the tone. But it was a good way to start the game. Clip two. Coming off – Coming off another possession, this goes into the second quarter, but uh, big boy, we had like third and 12 right there. This was a big conversion for us, uh, a shot downfield to uh, uh, to rest in victory. I thought that was a great job by Hudson reading that. And uh, you look at that at the, you know, before balls ever snap, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at him going, hey, let's go to victory, let's go to victory, and we go to victory, victory, and it was a great throw. Great throw, great route, big, big conversion right there and allowed us to go down and score. Clip three. And then was follow up, you know, touchdown after the finishing off this drive. But uh, we throw, try and throw a little play action pass there, and we get a little bit of pressure there. But man, what a improvise! Yeah, tough, tough throw. Usually don't recommend that. But um, cross your body. 
Yeah, it was a kind of cross back across the middle. You know, there's a lot of times you don't see guys in the middle, but um, and then Cork did a great job going down and getting that ball and and, and pulling that in, we kind of threw it into a hole right there and let him go get it. And uh, he did a good job pulling that in for a touchdown. So put us back on top. Clip four. <clears throat> this is when it all kind of broke open for yeah, us, and so it's the special teams right there. It's a big, big block there by Gage Ellison. He got through, got penetration, laid out, got the block, and then Gunner picked it up. And the <laughs> guy tried to pull him down, but he really he went. He just went down. His head was the only thing that really went down to the ground, and uh, he had the, the the awareness to jump up and keep running. And uh, it was kind of like, hey, go, go, you're not down. And he picked it up. Referees are looking at him. It's like take that thing to the house, and so. Uh, he picked it up, run it back for a touchdown. So that was a that was a big turnaround right after we scored. So I think that was their, you know, they we three and outed them, and they had to punt, and then we punched that in on that extra, on that uh, block or block punt, and um, you know what I'm going to say, twenty one seven. Favorite thing to do is look at the reactions. Yeah, right there. It's like let's go, <laughs> yeah, go go go. It's a touchdown if you go. Clip five. And then we followed that up on this ensuing kickoff. So. I thought our kickoff team did a really great job of covering. I, we didn't really give up very much field position right there, but a big hit by Chauncey Conway knocks the ball loose right there, and Luke Young pounces on it and uh, recovers that. So you, it was just a huge momentum shift right here in a very big football game that allowed us to kind of jump out. So, you know, we're up 21. We get a fumble right there and quick change on that, and uh, so we turn right around and come up with the next highlight. On, on that it was the uh, play following that fumble recovery. Clip and six. Uh, it was a good job by HUD checking off from the throw up top to go to the throw down low. And uh, we get we sneak uh, Cole in behind him and uh, get a shot down the sideline over there. They, they really were going to play our bubble stuff with their corners. And so we were able to sneak him vertical, um, anticipating play. those guys coming down to play that. Felt like we could get in behind them, and we did. And we got a good shot down there, a good pass, good catch, and and, uh, and boom, like that, we're up 28-7. So. Clip seven. Got down there again after they had pulled this thing back to within seven. So this was a big drive for us, and a uh, great read there on the option by uh, HUD. And uh, we get uh, – we get, Vic going in motion. They're kind of in a man coverage down there, so they, they're rotating their guys over, and everybody's everybody's kind of figuring out who's going to get who, and both of them kind of go with him, and that allows HUD to get up inside. Does a good job on reading that and getting that in the end zone. But game was game was getting interesting. We yeah. kind of botched some stuff right there before half. We really should have gone in up 35-14. I mm -hmm. screwed that up on uh, you know, on a call down there and, and uh, got it in too late, and then we ended up getting – you know, we had a couple of jump off sides, and then we had a delay a game. So, yep. we had three penalties in a row that really killed that drive. And then, and then one of their kids made a really great play on the interception. So, you kind of got to give him kudos on that because that was, that was a good job on his part because he rushed right, and then bailed out at the last second and somehow snagged that ball when we had it, we had it open. But uh, somehow he got a hand on it and pulled it in. So Clip eight. Now we're in a ball game. So – we got it to 34-21, so we, we were able to pull it out, get ahead a little bit, uh, stretch it out a little bit, kind of turn this over to our defense. So we get in our nickel package because we got them in third and long and mm -hmm. we can get some pressure on them. And great pressure up front right there by Gavin Rich. He got he got free off of the nose, made a play on the quarterback, and then, and then as usual, Cole's going to come off the edge. And, uh, you know, he's – there's not many guys going to block him. He's going to get off the edge, and then he finishes it up, what what Gavin started. So, great job on defense right there of getting that turned around. So, we got a 13-point lead, and we just shut them down. We need to go back down and score. And unfortunately, Clip nine. Fortunately, we didn't didn't really do that. But we do, we do get it to 41-21. We get it here mm -hmm. on that. We're going to go punch this thing in um, and score again. This was, uh, this was kind of something we had put in. We ran that earlier. Um, we ran a little screen. I mean, it's kind of a pick play because we're throwing it behind. We're trying to pick that guy that's going in motion. But yeah. then we dupe him. We, we ran it earlier with a pick. <coughs> and then that time we didn't pick him. We just slipped him. We just that was took kind that of one a, little bite. That was kind of uh, our, uh, 
Our guys kind of improv that. I'm glad yeah. they told me after the fact. I'm kind of like, why did we throw that? We were supposed to throw that to Carter, but they had, they kind of came up with that on their own. So we'll give them kudos on that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was effective. Clip 10. We ended up throwing a pick, pick six. They yeah. got it back within six, and this is ensuing kickoff. And then, you know, they, they just kept kicking it to them. And I'm like, keep kicking it to them. Right. And, uh, I don't think I'll anyone tell you what, hasn't kicked to Probably to what yet. was more impressive, and it's what Coach Blackburn said to me on the sideline when we were talking down there, probably what was more impressive than running that back for the kickoff was the catch on the bounce. Yeah. That that ball had a hard bounce on it, bounced full up speed. high, and he full speed running up there and jumps up and grabs it out of the midair and doesn't miss a beat and just runs right through that, puts a little quick little move on that guy right there, and just boom, he's by him, and then – Turn it on, turn on the speed, put a move on the last guy, and get around him. I thought he was going to fall out of bounds. I thought his, I thought his <laughs> momentum and everything was going to carry him out of bounds, but yeah. he was able to tip, tippy toe down that sideline and take it back to the house. So, got us back up to a thirteen point lead. Felt, Clip felt a little bit more comfortable. So, trying to hang on, you know, we're, they've, they, they've got a good football team, so they're going to put pressure on you and yep. they're going to cause a lot of trouble. And we got great coverage in the back end, force him out, and then. Uh, Get him, get him to step up. Cole's kind of sitting in there. He's jamming the receiver and then kind of hanging around in there, kind of in a spy situation to help with quarterback run. Uh, if we don't get to him, he and Braden are in there. And so he's able to see him and, and uh, get him get him lassoed and get him down. Clip 12. Big sack. So, Ben, you know, it's a close game again. We're back into a six-point game. We need we need some big plays here, and we need to make another big play, get him in a sprint-out situation, get him caught, get some pressure on him again. So that was a big big stop for us. Um, great great job up top. Coverage was really good, which forced him to pull it down, and then we did a good job of getting off blocks and getting pressure to the quarterback. And, and after he flushed, we were able to you know change pace and get back on him. And good job by all those guys that. Pursuit. That harassing him and cold in there harassing him again. <laughs> Clip 13. Really love it when we get in that nickel package. Now we're in dire straits here because this is the end, of, end of the game. And they've got uh, – they just thrown th one through the back of the end zone incomplete and uh, coming up with their uh, a third down throw right here. And he had him there for a second open, but mm -hmm. just a great read by Bryson. He just – not really his guy, but he reads that. And realizes that that guy's – they're trying to go to 21. That's just – you know, that's the guy that really pays attention to what's going on during the week. 21's one of their guys. That's the guy they want to throw the ball to. And yep. so he, he knows it's coming and uh, just jumps it. What a, just a tremendous job of making a break on that, on that ball to make that pick. Game-saving interception right there. Hold your breath a little bit at the two yard line. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Where man, out, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was not good. Unfortunately, got that holding penalty and backed them up. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it was going to be hard to stop them at that point. But, Clip fourteen, uh, a little easier from the twelve. So kickoff, ensuing kickoff, first play, just another great job, great read by Bryson right there, and and uh, sealed it. You know, kind of he's kind of floating around backside safety over there, kind of reading reading what they're trying to do. If they're trying to – you can see him bail out right there, and then they're going to go over the top. And it looks like that guy's open, but if you don't read that backside safety it, and, and lay that up there, he's going to go get it, and he just goes up. He goes up makes a great play and seals the victory for us. So, big, big huge win. And, yeah. uh, you know, he got a little dicey there for a little bit. You know, we we had a – you know, I just – a couple mistakes that, you know, I, I feel like I – you know, obviously we got the delay penalty, and then we got yeah. the safety. We really wasn't trying. I mean, we were really trying to get the ball out of it. I probably put us in something that we really shouldn't have been in. Yeah. And um, let's go go with something we're a little bit more comfortable with, and, uh, and maybe that would have worked better. But um, you know, once again, I just our guys found a way to win, and that's the key. Forty-eight, forty-four. That final score for last Friday's game, Blanchard Bethany. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Who do you have for me this week for interviews? Well, we're going with HUD. Okay. And uh, Cade Saunders. So is Cade here? Okay, he made there it. Is. I know He's there was here. some car yeah. troubles before, so we'll go. <laughs> we'll go Hudson first, and then we'll go Cade, and then we'll shuffle back them, both of them, back in here for a little activity I got planned for us. So. Cade drink his latte or whatever he's got going over right. there. Right. Going on that. <laughs> so yeah. we'll be with uh, we'll be with Hudson Perriman right after this. You are watching the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show on BlanchardLions.tv.
Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Surface Experts is your one-stop shop for all of your hard surface damage. If you have a scratch, chip, crack, burn mark, or hole, we can handle it. We repair all types of hard surfaces, including stone and laminate countertops, wood and LVP floors, tubs, showers, and cabinets. We can also grind and polish glass cooktops and remove scratches from stainless steel elevators and appliances. We focus on repairing just the spot with the damage, so you don't have to replace the Welcome back to the second segment of the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show here at Ten Arrows Coffee and Bistro. Big shout out to Ten Arrows hosting us uh, this year. We are outside. It's getting a little cooler. We are working against uh, daylight here, so we're going to try and uh, power through these last three segments. I'm with Hudson Perriman, uh, newly minted this year, I guess I should say, yeah. after being out for the first uh, four weeks. Sir, how are you? I'm great. Yeah, doing Glad good. Glad to be back. I guess I got to say this. I know I interviewed you last year. You are a senior. Yes. Okay. And you're QB. Yes. Okay. That's it. Yes. For now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get. We'll. We'll get to some questions here. Let's. Let's start in the football world, and then we'll uh, get out of the football world. Um, let's start before the season. Uh, let's start at the the day that this all happened. The injury. Oh Walk boy. us through. You know when, what, where, why. Um, just kind of walk us through that day and where it happened and what was going through your head after it happened. Okay, so we were at uh, – I was at a North Texas football camp, and I was getting some tight end work, and I was running routes against some DBs, so we were doing one-on-ones. Okay. And I went up, caught a ball, and I went to turn up field, and the DB came and, like, tried to strip it from me, and he, like, hip dropped with it. And uh -huh. I fell forward on my collarbone. As soon as I hit, I was like – Did you know? That's the exact same thing I felt on my left collarbone that I broke freshman year. Okay, so, so it was the same, like, same shoulder, well, or was no. it different? So I have two scars, so one on my left and one on my right. So I broke my right one this time. Lovely. Okay, yeah. so after that happens, we go through rehab process, right? I yes. mean, what, what, what did that week to week, that day to day, look like for you? When did you start it? I guess what like month, and then just tell me what that process was like. So it happened in late July, and I had my, I didn't get to have my surgery until about early August. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so because our my surgeon was out of town at that point, and he came back a little bit later. You so have your own surgeon. <laughs> well, well, the guy that does that's my impressive does my surgeries. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> right. He's probably you probably on a first name basis with yeah. how many you've had on both yeah. shoulders. I we're, like that. We're pretty good buddies at this point. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, how you were contributing to the team, even though you weren't able to be, you know, in practice. Obviously, being a senior, probably going to have a couple more roles than, you know, when you were a freshman, right? Yeah. I mean, what did that, that senior leadership role look like to you um, on the sidelines with your injury? Yeah, so I was just – I was really just kind of helping Noah out, just taking him under my wing and just pointing him on some things that he can, he can improve or if he can – what he's doing right and just trying to give him a little bit of confidence to go out there and – win a game yeah so let's let's get into what last friday was that one versus bethany uh first off how do you feel now how, after going through you know a game game time reps i mean how does the how does the shoulder feel how do both shoulders feel i guess would be a better they question great good was yes. there any was there any hits that happened during the game where it was like oh yeah there was that kind of feels well, a little different not on my collarbone but the one i threw the pick six on that one that was a stinger yeah oh full body stinger on that one how do you think? Uh, how do you think your performance was? I know usually when I interview guys, it's you know talking about the linebacker unit or the the line unit. I mean, yeah. with QB, it's kind of just it's you and, and and that's it. You have your receivers, you have your line, your running back. Uh, how do you think the offense in general did versus Bethany? You know, I looking back on film, like I like uh, during the game, I was like, you know, I'm having, I'm doing all right for not playing in a while. But honestly, I just give all the props to my receivers to be honest, because I didn't. I remember I threw like maybe two good balls all night. 
You think? Yes. Only two? Yes. And the and other how- ones were just them adjusting to the ball and making a play on it. Okay. I, I know I hinted at it at the beginning, but are the, is we're going to see any both sides of the ball for you, or is it just going to be strictly offense? Maybe. Remind I'm me what you played defensively last safety. year. Safety. Yeah. Okay. And like a like a deep third safety. Are we are we stepping back because of the injury? Just maybe kind of for a little bit, maybe. Okay. So the the the, the opportunity still on the table is what you're saying. Yes. So this is kind of a, a bad question just because of what I talked about with Coach Craig in the in the beginning, but you've obviously had reps at QB. Yes. But you played most of your time last year at tight end. Yes. Um, first off, what's harder to learn just high school wise? And then how has that, you know, going from tight end to QB this year, how has that transition been for you? Well, I'd probably say quarterback to be honest, because you gotta know what it's harder. Yeah. Okay. You gotta know what everybody's doing. You gotta read the coverages. Yeah. Which tight ends a a little bit of that. You gotta read what a linebacker's doing and what you're gonna do blocking wise on him. Yeah. But yeah, that's I'd say quarterback's probably more difficult. Okay. And how has a you know you obviously knew a a large amount of the playbook, I'm I'm assuming just because of the the Q B. Let's talk about uh, Tecumseh this Friday. Obviously, it's been a, a pretty rough I, – it is rough. This Just yeah. the stretch of teams you've played, you know, Guthrie, Newcastle, um, Bethany. Uh, we're coming into this week, it's a, it's a team that you probably go out and you know you're better than, right? How, yeah. do you, how do you prepare the same exact way for a team that you know you're better than as opposed to a team where you may be a little bit more even uh, talent-wise? You just got to treat everybody like your best opponent, like – you just got to go out there and play your hardest every every snap and just do what you're supposed to do and put it on them. Yeah. Okay. By the way, Hudson Perriman, senior QB for Blanchard, uh, back for the first time last week after a collarbone injury. Uh, last question before uh, we send you out. We'll have you back. Don't worry. First of all, realized him and Kate are family. Did not know yes. that before. I like how these pairings have been kind of – uh, intentional, yeah. uh, if you will, for the uh, for the interviews. But last one, last one before we get you out of here. Say one good thing uh, about Cade before we bring him up here. I if mean, you can find one, say something <laughs> bad about him. I guess if you can't find something good. Uh, I mean, he's he's family, so I love him like my brother because obviously he's my cousin. But yeah, I mean, he's always going to be there for me. He's always been there for me, and I love him. Nice. Well. Uh, we're gonna we're we're gonna bring Cade on. I uh, also some uh, one uh, another guy I interviewed last year, but that's Hudson Perriman, senior QB for your Blanchard Lions football team. We're gonna have him back on after we interview Cade. You are watching Blanchard Lions coaches show at Ten Arrows Coffee and Bistro. We'll be right back. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future. Discover a path worth traveling down. Find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. This back to school season, Give your home the connection it deserves with Go Pioneer Fiber Internet. Experience the power of Wi-Fi 6 technology for smoother streaming, gaming, and learning. And with the Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi app, managing your home network is a breeze. Choose from multiple plans with symmetrical speeds. Welcome back to segment three of the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show here at 10 Arrows Coffee and Bistro. Just got done talking with Hudson Perriman. Uh, Now up at the plate is uh, Kate Saunders, senior, senior, Kate yes. Saunders. Yeah. Defensive lineman, Kate Saunders. D line, O line. Center, Kate Saunders. A little bit everywhere. Okay. All right. I have to. I have to say those preliminary questions because you believe it or not, I've got some of those wrong. Uh, let's start with football, and then we'll <laughs> do some not football, and then we'll uh, have you and Hudson back on to uh, do a fun activity. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, defensive side of the ball. Since you're doing both, we're going to have to do, you know, 
the defense offensive switch. Uh, defensive performance versus Bethany. How do you feel like the D line matched up with what Bethany had to offer? Off, obviously, it's a lot of playmakers on that side of the ball for Bethany. How do you think uh, the D line held up against the O line? Definitely, definitely one of our better games so far in the okay. season as far as the whole group. Uh, we did a way better job this week of not going backwards yeah. and getting hands on mostly. Okay. Definitely, definitely could have been better in some spots, but just, uh, you know, we got a whole new group. And we're just adjusting as we go along. So, what does a you say better? What does a what is a great like game from the D line? Like, how can you tell the difference between a great game from the D line versus a, a subpar game from the D line? Mostly just doing our job, doing what we need to do, and getting I mean, it's back really there. Or is it as simple as getting back there? Or is it plugging? Mostly gaps? depends on the situation. Now, Kay. I can't speak for, I guess, the exterior D lineman, the tackle, and the in the uh, defensive end because yeah. I don't play that. But I know for nose guard, it's mostly just getting hands on center, mm -hmm. uh, take on a double team, don't get moved backwards. Okay. And as long as you can really do those things, and yeah, you're having a pretty, I'd say, pretty decent game. Okay. Let's switch it. Let's go to the L line. <coughs> Thank you for covering the mic. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Online production. Uh, o line performance versus uh, versus Bethany. Um, talk about it. I know you're the you're the center. I know you said you kind of move in and out with, especially all the injuries that have happened. There, you know, yeah. maybe some moving around for certain guys. Uh, how do you think they did against Bethany, the O line specifically? O line, once again, definitely, definitely better. Okay. Uh, the O line is tr continuously getting better every week. Yeah. And specifically against Bethany, it was one of our better games. Okay. Of course, we. Uh, we had Braden Heffernan get hurt last week. Yep. So we definitely were trying to make some adjustments for that. And then, of course, Braxton Rankin got hurt in the game. Who I thought was Mason Pierce oh. because oh, yeah, they, they were wearing his different jerseys. Yeah, but we had to switch his number. I keep going. That. Yeah. So, you know, with just moving people around is trying to get fits where it definitely went better than I think most of us were expecting. Yeah. How do you uh, keep morale up? How do you keep, you know, spirits high when, you know, you have guys, you know, going down like flies left and right? Um, how do you really bring up those underclassmen or people that may have not gotten as many reps because of those guys that got injuries were healthy? I mean, how do you keep mm -hmm. morale up in those situations as a senior? Well, really all you can do is just talk them up as much as you can. Just let them know that as long as they do their job, that everything's going to be all right. And then ultimately just go do that job, you know, go – just, just do what you need to do, really. All what you can do is just trust the guy next to you, and yeah, that's about it, really. I what mean, do you, what are you doing in the day to day? Like, obviously, this is a brand new situation with Heffernan and and Rinkin. Um, what does that look like practice wise, day to day? How are you making sure they're in lockstep with you know some of the older guys that are that are starters on the team? Just reps, just is reps, it a rep? Is reps. it as simple as just it's a reps thing and just making sure they're doing the right thing, or is yeah, it a little bit of I everything? Mean, it's really just you know with getting younger guys, you know, helping them get better, helping them get up, you know, get better to the point that uh, they can really help us in the game. All you can really do is just get reps. I mean, yeah. so we just – definitely a lot of repetition for sure. Okay. We've talked enough about football. We've got to talk about something that I haven't mentioned once this entire mm. year. Uh, the fabled lineman nights. Are those still <laughs> a thing? I mentioned yes. it to you. Like, oh, they are. Yes, okay. Are you them. are you the ringleader of the of the lineman night, or is it like a group thing? It's like, definitely a group thing. Is it it's literally just linemen, or can anyone no. on the team come? Any anybody, skill player, anybody, anybody can come. So, so. I ended up getting invited <laughs> to a lineman night last year. Um, just to see what it was like. I wasn't able to go, sadly. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> really? Very unfortunate, can, yes. For those of that are unaware, can you just tell me what goes through – or maybe the events that happened during alignment night. Well, last maybe year's nothing illegal. Don't last say those year's things, were. But ooh, last yeah. year's. This Rowdy? year it's so much more tame. You wouldn't even think they're the same thing. Is that because of the personnel that are involved in the alignment nights, or is it? I mean, yeah, yeah. It is the personnel. I mean, yes, yes, and no. Okay. I mean, so what, g give us an example of some of the things that at alignment night. What happens? Well, this year it's been a lot of. Uh, Luke Meeker playing the guitar. Wow. That is definitely what it's been. Okay. And it is enjoyable to see. Acoustic? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that – oh, he gets up there. He starts – you know, he starts playing it. He starts singing it. So you guys just are like, just watching him or – We sing along every now and again. Oh, yeah? Every what are some sing-along songs that are that are played? Uh, Revival by Zach Bryan. That's a, that's a big one. Okay. I'm unaware, but continue. Um, what else we play? What else does he play? 
Is there food at these oh, things? Oh, yeah. Broken window serenade. Thank, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Is there food at yes, these things? Yeah. Are you the ones making it, or is it the parents stepping in? As far as I, uh, I know, the parents, I believe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the player's not helping out with the strenuous activities. I'm, I'm sure maybe maybe depends on, on who in the household. But Will you extend an invitation to me this year? Okay. Tuttle week? You come to that one. All okay. Right. That's the when next time when do I these have it. When do these things happen? Wednesday nights. Okay. I don't know exactly what day that'd be. Okay. After I practice. We, I think we play Tuttle. I don't know what day we play Tuttle. I know it's It's a later. Weeks. It's a lot later than most years. So at least I don't the past know the two exact been. date. It's a I'll November date, I think. Yes, yeah, so I, will, I will get back to you on that. Okay. Actually, I think it's the end of October. But Before we cycle uh, Hudson back in, you got to say one good thing about him before we bring you both back on stage. So... Uh, this is your opportunity to good luck beating what he said, by the way. Oh, I but, heard him. Um, I've been sitting here trying to trying to think of how to top that. It's yeah. kind of tough. But no, you know, kind of like he said, you know, it's my brother, you know what I mean? You know, of course, you know, we're cousins. Uh, been with him my whole life, you know. Yeah. Just hanging out with him, and he's a great guy. And all, all I can say is, you know, we're kind of, it's kind of it's kind of closer than cousins, more towards brothers. Okay. And, you know, QB1, you know what I mean? He's a pretty good quarterback. I don't. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah, he is. I I'm sorry, I, I thought you were going somewhere. I didn't I'm, know. <laughs> I love him. I love him on <laughs> and off the field. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Well, we're gonna bring him back in, and we're gonna see how well you two can uh, perform uh, with some uh, well, football, no. some football trivia. So, uh, <laughs> rolling into the second to final segment here, we're gonna take a small break, bring Hudson back into the fold. We'll do some uh, football trivia here. You are watching the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show at Ten Arrows Coffee and Bistro. We'll be right back. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention. Welcome back to the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show here at Ten Arrows Coffee and Bistro. 6.45 is your time. Uh, I am back up on the stage with both Hudson Perriman and Kate Saunders. Uh, we're going to do a part two of this. We started this uh, little mini game last week, and I'm just going to say, uh, I believe it was Gunnar Fugit and Nathan Mosier. Um, they killed it. Uh, they know their situational football questions, so we're going to see if the QB and an O and defensive lineman can uh, keep up. So I got ten questions here for both of you. I'm going to be nice. If you get seven out of ten, we'll consider that successful. Okay, that's a C. Minus. So, first off, how do we feel? We feel confident that we can get 7 out of 10. These range from easy to hard. You can't ask the audience for anything. They're pretty much competing against you. Okay? Got it? Good? Sounds good. Okay. Yep. Question one. A team attempts a two-point conversion, and the pass is intercepted in the end zone. What happens next? A, the ball is dead immediately. B, the defense can return the interception for two points. C, the ball is placed at the defense's 20-yard line. D, the play is considered a touchback. A team attempts a two-point conversion, and the pass is intercepted in the end zone. What happens next? Uh, uh, I'm going to go, go with A. A, I think. The ball is dead immediately. I'm not um, – mm. B, the defense can return the interception for two points. C, the ball is placed at the defense's 20-yard line. D, the play is considered I'm a touchback. I'm pretty confident in A there. Yeah, I'm thinking – thinking A. That is incorrect. Okay. It is B. The defense can return what? the interception for two points. Is uh, that not right? 
Chat GPT. I was say, I was yeah, say, what? Chat GPT is I doing mean, me never, wrong. I've never seen anybody return a two point conversion. So A is I was correct. So confused. Wow. Okay. Let's go. So one for one. This may be not the only time I get corrected after that first one. We'll just keep. <laughs> we'll just keep going. A defensive player jumps into the neutral zone but gets back before the snap. What is the ruling? A offsides. B false start. C no foul if no contact is made. D illegal formation. A. If that hadn't happened Friday, I wouldn't know that. But a, but A. Is A correct? Correct. Two for two. I did not have that answer. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Man, I need to find some different. Uh, <laughs> I need to find some different uh, questions. During a punt, the ball is blocked and lands beyond the line of scrimmage. Can the punting team recover and advance it? A. Yes, it's treated like any fumble. B. No, the ball is dead if recovered by the punting team. C. Yes, but they can only down the ball. D. No, it's an automatic turnover. During a punt. The ball is blocked and lands beyond the line of scrimmage. Can the punting team recover and advance it? Uh, Wait, read, read my answers One more, one more time, one more time. Read on the, the answers. answers again. Okay. During, the, during a punt, the ball is blocked and lands beyond the line of scrimmage. Can so the punting team recover and advance it? A, yes, it's treated like any fumble. B, no, the ball is dead if recovered by the punting team. C, yes, but they can only down the ball. D, no, it's an automatic turnover. I'm going to guess A. I got no idea. Say it again. Oh, uh, so like no. it's like on the, the beyond the line of scrimmage, correct? During a punt, Not the ball is blocked and lands beyond the line of scrimmage. Kay. Can the punting team, the punting team, recover and advance it? Yes, it's treated like any fumble. <laughs> B, no, the ball is dead if recovered by the punting team. B, B, yeah, B. B. C, yes, but they can only down the ball. Is that correct? B, no, the ball is dead if recovered by the punting team. Uh, yeah, I don't, you can't, like, past it, like, beyond it. Okay. Three for three. Congrats. Okay. Number four. Long way to go, Kate. An, <laughs> an, an offensive player is in motion at the snap but is moving laterally and not forward. Is this legal? A, no. Motion is only allowed backward. B, yes, as long as no one else is in motion. C, yes, but only if they stop for one second before the snap. D, no, only forward motion is illegal. B. That is correct. <laughs> wow. Five. If a player's helmet comes off during a play, what is the correct action for the subsequent play? A, the player must stop and leave the field for one play. B, the player is stopped immediately. C, the player must stop, but the play continues. D, the player may continue to par participate in the play. C. Yeah. I'm going to go with A. Wait, just read them again. Hold on. You said C was they well, the player has to stop, but the play continues? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's that one. If it's a trick question, then yes, that's it. I'm thinking last year to Jake Carter's helmet coming off during a game. Because we did get penalized for that last year for somebody playing without a helmet on. I have A. Okay, that's The player must stop and leave the field for one play. Does okay, so the if, field? if the play ends, then yes, that's A. If it's during the play, then yes, he must stop. We'll give you half a point on that okay, one. I'll take half. I'll take half. Six, on a kick return, the returner signals for a fair catch but, but does not catch the ball. Can the ball still be advanced by the return team? No. Whichever, whichever letter that is. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. You cannot. That, that happened the other day, too. Man. What is the Good result of a forward pass that is intentionally thrown out of bounds from inside the pocket? A, incomplete pass, replay down. B, 10-yard penalty and loss of down for intentional grounding. C, 5-yard penalty, no loss of down. D, 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. B. Final? Uh, hey, that's, a, that's a quarterback. <laughs> I trust him. That is correct. That is correct. Okay, so we currently have six and a half points with three questions left. You just need one more to win. During an onside kick, the ball is touched by a player on the receiving team before it travels 10 yards. What is the result? A, the ball is dead and possession goes to the kicking team. B, the play continues until the receiving team secures possession. C, the ball is live and either team can recover it. D, a penalty is assessed on the receiving team for illegal touching. D. C? D. Uh, D, D final? Uh, that is incorrect. It is C. The okay. ball is live, and either team can recover it. If it's touched before? By the receiving team. 
I thought it was kickoff team. That's on me. Number nine. Still looking for one more correct answer with two questions left. If a player's knee touches the ground while holding the ball, but they are untouched by an opponent, what happens? Oh, well, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> the play is dead as soon as the knee touches. B, the play continues. C, it's a dead ball only if it is in the end zone. D, the play is dead only if contact is made afterward. A. A. Correct. Good job. Let's see if we can get eight and a half points. Let's go for it. Number 10, in a goal line stand, a defensive player commits a personal foul. What is the penalty? Is it A, 10-yard penalty, no automatic first down? B, 15-yard penalty, replay down? C, automatic first down and half the distance to the goal? D, half the distance to the goal, replay down? D. Good. Haven't said final yet. So they're on the goal line? Did you say on the goal line, a defensive the player commits a personal foul. What is the penalty? This Half the, distance, half the distance to the goal, replay Did down. You say D? Say, say D again. I said D? D is half the distance to the goal, replay down. C is automatic first down and half the distance to the goal. That one, whatever you just said, that. Was that C, I think? C, is that a final for the win? It's C or D. Uh, HUD, it's up to you. I'm cool with it there at this point. I need a final. Come on, HUD. I'm going to go with C. That is correct. Good job, boys. Sorry for the uh, the wrong answers. Never going to input stuff in the <laughs> chat GPT ever again. I guess I'll have to assess a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a referee's uh, quiz book or something for the year. But uh, that's Hudson Perriman. That is Kate Saunders. Uh, cousins, or as Kate likes to refer to them, closer than cousins, brothers. For sure. Um, <laughs> it's 6.53. We're going to get these guys out of here. Bring Coach Craig back in for one last segment, going to preview what is to come with Tecumseh this Thursday. Uh, I'm Drake Vitito alongside uh, Kate Saunders, Hudson Perriman. You are watching the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show on Blanchard Lions TV. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Surface Experts is your one-stop shop for all of your hard surface damage. If you have a scratch, chip, crack, burn mark, or hole, we can handle it. We repair all types of hard surfaces, including stone and laminate countertops, wood and LVP floors, tubs, showers, and cabinets. We can Welcome back. Going into the final segment here of the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show. 6.55 your time here with Coach Craig going to preview what is to come for Tecumseh on Thursday. Uh, Tecumseh 3-2 and two on the season. Uh, their wins include uh, Class in SAS, McLeod, and Medill. Um, and their losses include Seminole in that non-district game in Week 2 and then Hera uh, this past week. So uh, I was talking it to a little bit with the players before. I'm um, telling them it's been it's been a really challenging, you know, first part of the season. Right. You go, you know, you had Newcastle, you have Bethany, you have Guthrie. Um, I think this is maybe the first week, maybe outside of Noble, what they ended up being um, where you can say, you know what? I think we can go in and take care of business relatively early. I know that anything can happen in, in the world of sports. But um, how do you prepare for a team like this? Uh, is it any different than, you know, preparing for a Bethany or preparing for a Guthrie? I mean, how do you prepare the guys, keep that same level of intensity up for a team that you know you're probably going to be better than, you know, lining up well, against? Well, the biggest – I think the biggest thing for us is we always try we, – we try to keep the focus on us. Yeah. It's the only thing we can control is us. We try to keep focused on us. Let's let's worry about what we do. Let's worry about who we are. We're not that worried about our opponent. Obviously, we game plan mm -hmm. certain things to them and, and do that. But we want to we want to control the controllables. So what can we control? We can control how we work, how we prepare. Uh, I, I always try to we we always try to take the mindset that it's it's never about 
any one opponent. You know, it's 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 a whole build up to a whole season. Uh, so it's it's everything week to week, but in that week to week, we're trying we're trying to get better. We're trying to work on us. We're trying to improve what we do. We're trying to do something a little better than we did the week before. We're trying yeah. to we're trying to improve in those areas. Put some wrinkles in here or there. Put a few things in that counter what the other team does. Mm -hmm. But in the whole scheme of things, it becomes what can we control? Control. Yeah. And let's take care of that. And so when when you've got an an opponent that so really that an opponent that you feel like okay we can win this football game or we should win this football game but you, you know you can also you can lose that football game too yeah I mean, it, they proved it last weekend in college mm -hmm. you know there, some of those things that happened in college you would have never thought you would see in your life was supposed to be a boring week and yeah, it turned it was supposed into to be a, a boring week, week and it turns out a week of what in the heck just happened yeah you know and uh it's like somebody i was listening on the radio today somebody's talking about vanderbilt beating you know Alabama. That, yeah, that that might be a we're we're seeing a once in a lifetime thing. Right. We may never see that again. Yeah. You know who knows? But so any week you can go out and lose a football game, and you know when you when you play somebody like Tecumseh who's just a grind. They're grinders. Yeah. They can get into a, a, a just a grind it out. Going to be at you. home. Going to be at their place. On a Thursday night, it's a short week. You know they're, yeah. you know they're going to try to possess the ball, try to hit us in the face, and try to grind it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've got to be ready for that. But at the same time, we we've got to keep the focus on us. And so we try to stay in that mindset week to week. Yeah. Let's let's worry about us. Let's worry about us getting better, mm -hmm. regardless of who we play. Let's let's do stuff better. Yeah. And. So we, we kind of focus on that. And so that, I think that really helps when you get to those games where you really feel like, okay, we, we're going to win this game. Or we should win this game. Yeah. And we don't really have many of those. Right. But, you know, when you're in those situations, if you're doing that, if you're worried about you and you're, and you're working on you and you're trying to fix you and we're trying to get better, mm -hmm. then it, it all seems to take care of itself. Yeah. Now you have to, you have to be focused on your performance and your execution on game days, right? You know, and we got to really stress that and really, really try to get focused on going out and executing, regardless of our opponents. I, I thought guys years ago did that. That was one of the biggest hurdles we had. You know, when I got here, was was getting past that, getting that mindset, past of when we played somebody we were supposed to beat to actually go out and beat them. Yeah. And to actually go out and put them away and not play down and not and not play lackadaisical and not play nonchalant and so getting past that hurdle was the biggest thing for us and we finally got past that I I, I, I really back to about 2012 we, it's when we kind of really got past that yeah that was probably the first year that we really went out and beat people the way we were supposed to beat them yeah and if we were supposed to put you away we went and put you away yeah. And we didn't mess around. We went out and executed. We went out and tried to be perfect. And that's the mindset that we want to go. We're going to try to go be perfect Thursday in everything that we do. Yeah. And and we want to be crisp. We want to be sharp. And we want to do it that way. And so we'll let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. If we do that, then we feel pretty good about our, our, our outcomes on game days. But um, – it's, it's getting that mindset and keeping that mindset, I think, is the biggest thing for us. It's obviously a short week. Um, first time that I've been doing this that uh, we have two Thursday games this year. Yeah, um, for and those back that, to back. For those unfamiliar, what does a short week mean for you guys as far as prep goes? Well, it really, you really kind of lose a day in there of your normalcy. Yeah. So you kind of disrupt a little bit of your normal routine. So you can decide, are we going to disrupt a Monday or are we going to disrupt a Wednesday? Yeah. And uh, so for us, because we always play our junior on JV games on Monday, we'll disrupt Wednesday. Yeah. So instead of instead of having that non-padded kind of a walk-through day, mm -hmm. focus a lot on special teams, and then uh, a little bit of our a little bit of O and D, and then a little bit of our two-minute stuff and all of our mm -hmm. kicking game stuff. 
um, we kind of lose that day. So we kind of have to blend that into Wednesday. So we kind of, you, you know, you kind of lose some of your individual times. And okay. You, you kind of get more you, – you work a little bit more team. You get your special team stuff done. So you really kind of lose a little bit of your preparation. Um, but uh, I – it really, to be honest with you, it's not bad at this time of the year, really, to, to get a short week because of the after – and we really kind of need a day, yeah, a little extra day in recoup. there to kind of recoup, yeah. And uh, you know, it'll be it'll be good for us to kind of kind of get those those two weeks where we can we can kind of really recoup a little bit and uh, and and get and get healed a little bit and 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 then get ready for that final stretch run. Yeah, let's talk it. Let's get right into it. Craig's commandments, keys of the game for Friday to get a dub. Um, give me as many as you want. Give me as little as you want. How is Blanchard getting a win on Friday? Well, I, I go back to kind of what I led up to with, with the other thing on there. I think executing. Executing on both sides of the ball. Executing what we do and, and, and doing it the way it's supposed to be done. If, if we do that, we feel pretty good about about what we can do. We went over there last year and played over there last year. And, boy, we – is that the, was that also a slow start last year? Yeah, that was okay. bad. Yeah, that was one, you know, we were dropping balls, we were, yeah. we were missing wide open people. We just it was just it was just a, not a good day. If, you know, we had some bad calls that went against us. It just yeah. it was just a overall bad bad day. Um and we blamed it on the white helmets cuz we switched over to the yeah, white helmets. Yeah, that's right. I do that remember deal, that. So we went with that, but yep. but it was just a it was just not a good night and I I think when you play teams like Tecumseh, which the, if you let them hang around, then you you can you can create a Install monster. Install that hope. You, yeah. Yep. And, and so we've got to go out and execute early and off and do what we're supposed to do and, and go out and do what we're expected to do, yeah. which is to go win the game and, and, and win it, you know, relatively easy. But it, it's going to be tough in that regard. But we're, we're going to have to – we're going to have to not – not give them short fields, mm -hmm. not turn the ball over, take care of the football, execute on offense, execute on defense. Um, and, and, you know, and those things those things will lead to a victory. You don't do those things, you know, it's going to be a long night. I yeah. Mean, if, we're not, if we're not good up front and we're not picking stuff up, we're not throwing the ball to the right person or we're not catching it when we throw it to us, you know, it's going to be a long night. So – yeah. I think those things are, are key for us to come out. And we and we need to go out and, and we need to go out and and get a big win and, and you know, this is our opportunity and we need to go do that. Um and we'll see what happens. Uh notable players, uh for those unaware of this to come to squad, maybe people to watch out for on both sides of the ball. Just numbers. Yeah. Just so um, you can see on the stream. Yeah, number three, number one or number three is the guy they try to go to, you know, on receiving stuff and try to get the ball in his hands, probably their best playmaker. Number one's, you know, another guy that they rely to on offense and defense. Okay. On that. And then, you know, they just they get a couple backs that they're they're gonna give the ball to and try to blast it up inside, run some you know, kinda run some wing T stuff, and then they get in some spread okay. stuff. So they're kinda a little bit of everything, but uh um you know, we got to be disciplined about uh, you know, about our keys and our reads and trust them, trust them and fit and get where we're supposed to get and, uh, you know, handle that that grinded out game. And, and if we, you know, it's just one of those deals, that, you know, they can, they can keep trying to grind it out and grind it out and grind it out. And if we can ever, you know, we make one play and get them behind the chains, then things change. Right. For them and we got a chance in. That is a Thursday kickoff at 7 p. at Tecumseh. That is the first of two back-to-back -back Thursday kicks. Uh, I believe it's because Ardmore used to be five, which made them a bigger mm -hmm. school, and the bigger schools traditionally take their fall break next week. Yeah, I just kind of, yeah, just kind of, you know, Tecumseh's on fall break this week. Okay. So they're doing it. We're on fall break next week. Oh, so I see. So we're doing it. Oh, okay. So then it's because of us yeah. then. So it's really kind of, it's really. Well, we'll just blame it on Tecumseh because okay. pretty yeah. much everybody else is on fall break next week too. Right. But there are a few schools that go on fall break um, this week coming up, and uh, some of them do it. I know, you know, the Norman schools used to do it on the OU Texas weekend, so yeah. everybody could be off, and I think some people still do that. So Yeah, that'll um, be a 7P kick. You can stream that on BlanchardLines.tv. If you're not able to get in front of a TV screen, you can stream that on the KRXO app on all iOS Android devices. And if you're in the car, you can also uh, 
listen to it terrestrially on 104.5 uh, Classic Rock. Anything I missed? Anything you want to add for Thursday for people yeah. may attending the game? Well, I mean, you know, Thursday it's Thursday night at Tecumseh, and uh, really not much else to add to that on those. It's just big another big week for us across the board. Um, you know, we got – Softball's in a Super Regional Friday. They're going to play Friday because we play Thursday. So Maybe give an update on so, what was. Yeah, we soft, did interview Blake Yeah, last Blake week. was on last week, and, uh, you know, Coach Stringer came in, and uh, we won that regional last week, and uh, so we're hosting a Super Regional this week. So Lovely. we'll play we'll play that Friday okay. at 1 and 3 because we're playing on Thursday. Yeah. So they moved that to Friday. Volleyball's in their regional Thursday at 3 over at Community Christian, and then uh, – um, and then bands got their big competition uh, Saturday, so their big okay. deal Saturday. They're doing a big send off uh, deal Friday. Uh, they'll have food trucks and stuff. Whatever. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. Some barbecue cool. and everything in there. Some ten dollar plates for Lovely. barbecue, and uh, they're going to do their performance and stuff. Kind of get their last little routine in before they go to their big competition, their big state competition on Saturday. So nice. um, if you can make anybody can make it out Friday, uh, I think they I think they're going to start playing around seven. Six, yeah. Around six, they'll start. You can get in there and get some food. Heck yeah. Get you something to eat and uh, Sounds watch like a good band time. perform and then uh, watch your competition for Saturday. I guess this is my time to do a little breaking news. Um, I will be out on Thursday night. I have a community event uh, with. Uh, uh, for my other work thing. So yep. I will sadly be out Thursday. Don't worry. Todd will still be calling the game. Carson will be taking uh, folding into my place. This is technically, I guess, since, be, since we've been doing it the first time he's done first color. Time, first time it's Todd and Carson. Carson. It's usually so, you and Carson. So, so yeah. I always like to say that not only are, are we the best around at doing what we do, but we're also the deepest. Um, yeah, we, so we, we always have good fill-ins for if one of us are out. Carson so. does a good job filling in he for does. you guys on that. So it's, that's, it's always good to have that back up. Yeah, so Carson and Todd on Thursday, I will be rejoining back into the fold for that next Thursday game. Uh, against Ardmore. But that'll do it for us here tonight. Uh, Drake Vitito alongside Jeff Craig. Big shout out to Ashley Robertson for pretty much being the entire brains behind this operation. Thanks you to everyone that both were here tonight in attendance at 10 Arrows uh, and watching on the stream. We appreciate you each and every week. We'll be back here next Tuesday uh, to recap what was a potential win or loss against probably a win to Tecumseh and uh, previewing what is to come versus Ardmore that next week on Thursday. Uh, but that'll do it for us here tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next week. You are watching the Blanchard Lions Coaches Show on BlanchardLions.tv. So you want to create your future. Discover a path worth traveling down. Find a career to get excited about. For decades, career tech has been training talented, skilled,